This week, episode 336 of Stogie Geeks. It's that time of year where the Cigar Insider produces an annual survey of 141 cigar shops. This survey reveals the hottest and best-selling brands in America. Not to, Nothing really sticks out there, but we will uh, break that down in regards to market share and what people are asking for when they walk into cigar shops and what people are smoking, what they like. We have cigar news. We have a COVID survey and stuff that you might need to know in my sticks of the week. And I'll let you know what I've been smoking. It's been a very interesting week. Palettes all over the place. It's dancing, as you could say. I'm flying solo this week. Everybody's busy. Either golfing or uh, job transition. So it's just like old times, Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. And Stogie Geeks 336 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote... Drew, who is remote over in Texas? Look at you. You got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Thank you for tuning in to episode 336 of the show. I'm excited. I can spread out today. I thought I was going to have an in-studio guest, but apparently golf is more important than a business commitment. So, you want to learn more about the industry? Keep an appointment. Start there. Anyway, moving on. Thank God I have the gift of gab so we can produce that. And we have some survey results, so I'm excited about that. And just a quick programming note, I am not talking about Drew. Drew is going through a hornet's nest, true story. So if you email Drew at storygeeks.com, he'll tell you his hornet's nest story. Uh, it's, it's, it, it ruined his coffee and cigar. Um, and it was funny because he was telling me the story and he got stung. And <laughs> the first thing I said was, did it ruin the cigar? <laughs> and it did. So if you're looking for a little bit of commentary on that, uh, Drew is... Uh, Taking a couple weeks off, uh, he's 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 in transition, not only with Hornets but uh, with his job. So that's uh, exciting, and it, ironically, it's around the time of uh, his anniversary. <laughs> so um, it's crazy. So we're gonna celebrate Drew's anniversary, uh, not next week, uh, because next week, uh, pre-COVID, uh, the Security Weekly team, as well as um, many cybersecurity people, would be meeting in Vegas. But that's going to be virtual, so there will be no Casa Fluente for me and Paul. There will be no Davidoff Lounge next week for Paul and myself. Uh, there, but there will be cigars and cocktails flowing steady, as Paul would say, because um, we are on the Security Weekly side filming uh, a boatload of interviews and keeping that all virtual uh, there. So... Um, if 
that tickles your fancy, then uh, you can stop by and visit me on a virtual booth. I'm not too sure how that's going to go down. Um, be honest with you, but uh, you know, in the cigar industry or another industry, I can understand how a virtual booth would be like intriguing, right? Sort of like all these new podcasts that are sprouting up. Hey, come on on Facebook, it'll be great, right? Yeah. Um, but um, in the virtual world, we're virtual all year, so. Isn't it just a regular meeting, right? I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go down. I'll keep you posted. So uh, point of the conversation is there will not be a Story Geeks in programming next week because it is the week of the Black Hat and we would be, uh, or DEF CON, uh, Attack or Summer Camp week. And uh, that, that that's where we go. So we'll be here two weeks from now. And uh, oh, oh, where we go with that schedule. Hopefully that'll give Drew enough time to uh, settle back into the saddle as he is much missed. So let's get to the show. Um, every year since I've been here, uh, um, I've had the opportunity to take the Cigar Insiders annual retail survey where they take 141 shops across the U.S. and they they give us survey results on the best-selling brands that are here in America. Um, and, you know, I, I'm looking at this and I'm not really shocked at this at all um but i as always will reveal the results uh for you um and we will go back uh from there so the best selling cigar brands that are ranked from one to ten um are according to this survey is to no surprise altero fuente uh with 44.8 percent uh, and Padron with the same percentage point. So Alto Fluente and Padron uh, are the actual uh, giants still. Um, they uh, were. It seems like year after year we have the same conversation. Um, yeah, uh, I can tell you from working uh, in a retail shop and having experience with that or sitting in a retail shop it happens very often when someone comes in and asks for either one or the other, especially if they're sending a significant other for gift buying and stuff like that. But either way, I'm sure they do very well across the board for these other results. Um, Perdomo, number three, 27.6% there. Um, I can go back into the archive machine, and I might do that. Uh, just to compare notes, but um, it's creeping up, you know. But Perdomo has always been a real uh, su super player for sure, especially in the brick and mortar shops. I think that they, you know, um, a, a while ago when you had Nest Chip Tax, there was a little bit of marketing that they did behind that, and they kept the prices the same. It bit, it, you know, it, it it brought on a lot of brand loyalty for sure. And for the price point, I mean, it's a pretty decent smoke for sure. Uh, the, there are a lot of Podomos that I really go to and um, that are my go-to. And there are some that I look when they do kind of limited stuff or, or, or harder to get stuff here in the Northeast. Um, the, you know, I, I try to seek some, some of that out uh, as well. But Perdomo is there at 27.6. Romeo and Julieta, again, no surprise, 21.8%. Um, I mean, these are some pretty hefty numbers of the percentage of people. This isn't market share. This is, out of a survey, the percentage of people that are coming in and, and then asking for that. So, you know, uh, Rocky Patel comes in at number five, 17.2%. Uh, so, again, you know, uh, companies that have been around, uh, for a while now, uh, you know, uh, at, at least on my tenure here at Story Geeks and Cigar Club Radio from when I was talking about this, because I would always produce this list anyway when I was on that platform uh, there. But again, you know, it, it, it's the same names, right? To me, it's the same names, right? Alto Fluente, Padron, Perdomo, Romeo and Julieta, Rocky Patel. Um, Shock to Davidoff being number six. Uh, again, I'm spit firing this off the top of my head. I think Davidoff was was a couple of scotches up uh, there, but uh, again, um, there's also some news about Davidoff uh, today uh, in regards to uh, some management uh, jumping ship. So uh, I'm sure 
that's probably not going to be a super big deal because, in my opinion, Davidoff is on their own planet. Uh, here's my ladder. Cool. Right? So, um, you know, I, I've always mentioned Davidoff. Uh, super excited. My father, I mean, you know, um, they're not my father, but my father's cigar brand, for those of you listening <laughs> and not watching, right? Um, you know, they're number seven, thir- 13.8. Uh, as you know, there was a little bit of a acquisition. My father, uh, Cigars, is uh, now going to... Um, they bought Fonseca Cigars. So uh, it's going to be Fonseca Cigars by my father. Or my father's cigars featuring Fonseca. I'm not too keen up on the on the label. And I think it was the first one that, that I said. So that's super cool. I'm going to add to their portfolio because I... I, I I speak to some brick and mortars, and they're like, oh, you know, Fonseca's, you know, I don't know if they do well. Well, let me tell you something. I- I'm no longer taking advice from uh, brick and mortar cigar managers, uh, that's for sure, um, because they couldn't sell a stick to you uh, if, 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 if they knew how to. Some of the ones, at least here in the Northeast, from my experience, right, it's like they just, you know, they, they, they're all over the map. I'm very, uh, I got a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, there, so I'll just not rant and continue for the sake of of doing that. But my father um, is there. Oliva, I, Oliva, eleven point five, right? No question that th- it's well sought after. Solid, solid staple to have in your humidor. Even if you get past the Milanio and you go to some of their um, lighter sticks and lighter price sticks as well. Solid staple to have within your humidor. This actually happened to me yesterday when I was in a brick and mortar shop and I held the door for someone just because I'm a nice guy and they like got upset that I held the door for them to walk into a humidor. Uh, I'm sorry, to walk into a cigar shop. Like, I was just walking the same path you were walking. I held the door for you and let you go in first. Like, you know what I mean? But I guess in COVID, that's frowned upon uh, by some people. But anyway, he walks in and says, You have any Macadudos? And uh, so Macadudo comes in, and I kind of, I, I did this. I'm sorry. It's me. I roll up. I'm like, oh, Macadudo's really? That's why, you, that's why you're upset. I, I held the door for you, right? You had a, you know. But anyway, so um, there you go with that. 10.3% uh, uh, there. And then Ashton um, does uh, is coming in. At number 10, at 9.2%. And these are, uh, like I said, from the survey, from the Cigar Insider, of the top-selling brands. Um, Now we're going to talk about uh, the brands that are requested most by uh, consumers, right? So, uh, oh, that's tasty. Anyway, ah, uh, so the actual stick from the brand that's coming in from the consumers. So, number one, to no surprise, 29.9% is the Padron Anniversary uh, 1964. I mean, again, solid, solid staple. No question. Right there. Um, Alto Fluente, and I love the second category. Alto Fluente comes in at number two at 26.4%. Arturo Fluente Opus X comes in at um, number three at 16.1%. Big distinction, uh, Opus X line, uh, I can tell you that many many people uh, seek out that stick for sure. They make a bunch in the series. Uh, if you, the Story Geek, want to hear a very interesting interview, we interviewed Richard Carlton Hacker. Uh, if you forget that name, you can email me at joehstogegeeks.com and I can send you the actual link. But a fascinating interview when he uh, was writing in his book way back in 1989 about when um, he was with uh, Florente Sr. and talking about the concept of this cigar coming out of the Opus X and all of that. So that was a great interview. And it, and it, And what's unique about it is... Richard wrote a book, but he's not from the industry. He wrote a book because he interviews people, and that's his style, and he does lifestyle things. That's He's an author, right? Thank you very much. Uh, awesome. 
Oh, wow. That's crazy. I, I didn't even plan that. It's amazing how that all works. Did the audience hear you or no? Okay, cool. So, my producer and video extraordinaire, Johnny, looks it up for me. Good thing he barked in my ear as opposed to putting on Slack. He'd know I'd read it tomorrow, right? <laughs> um, Johnny, what was the episode again? Episode. So, if you go to storygeeks.com forward slash 302, you can hear the uh, Opus X beginning story of when the crop was in the field and what the experience was even from a cigar outsider like the author Richard Carlton Hacker. And that was uh, July 19th uh, of 2019, if you were uh, dating that there. But you can type in the episode number and fascinating interview, amazing guy, and one heck of a Stogie Geek prep call to get a, I believe he was 79 off the top of my head, so he's probably 80 now, um, and getting him on to a Zoom call <laughs> uh, and doing that, that took a long time to happen. That was, uh, Johnny showed his patience once again. We can do a lot of outtakes here on Story Geeks of the prep calls. Um, moving on. Number four, Liga Pravada, 14.9%. Ask for Liga Pravada, no... Like I said, nothing really sticks out here. Like, like, like up and you know, it's just staples, staples, staples. Uh, if I were a retailer and I was listening to a show like this or uh, or another show that or or produces this list, uh, or 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 the source of the of the, of the list, post it on cigarfishnado dot com, which is where I'm getting my information. So you click on their news and away you go, right? Um, yeah, you um, you know, you you have to have these these sticks in 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 your arsenal because this is again you know solid numbers right 14.9 percent of people coming in asking for liga provada not just Jewish state liga provada right 16.1 percent of of your business is coming in and asking for after fluente opus x 26 percent after fluente Padron, 29.9 percent huge numbers when you're talking about volume pushing sticks and then and then uh, trying to create a tobacconist culture or a bar. If you create a tobacconist culture, follow this list. If you create a bar, we'll see in three years when it's a bar doing something else. Okay, moving on. Uh, La Flor Dominicana. Whoo! I'm shocked at this number, right? 13.8%. I'm surprised that consumers are not upset at La Flor Dominicana because here in the Northeast, there was distribution problems for a while. I'm talking solid nine months. It could be more, but I don't want to exaggerate. Solid nine months. That being said, um, it, 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 when the brick and mortar would complain about the distribution and ordering stuff and doing that, it some it turns it, it's going to do one of two things. It's going to create a demand like, wow, when that comes in, I should probably get ten of them, right? Or if they have a personality like mine, I'm like, you have freaking 603 other facings. I'll find something else. You know what I mean? Um, now it's kind of funny because they've since then fixed that that um, distribution issue here in Northeast. And uh, wow, uh, they're sitting on the shelf. Um, I'm sure they're going to get some marketing. Come back and give it a good push. We'll see. Rocky Patel, 11.5% comes in at number uh, six. Davidoff, 9.2. I think that slipped a little bit off the top of my head um, there. But then again, again, Davidoff, they're on their own planet, in my opinion, from a business model perspective. Um, you know, 9.2 come in. Like, you have to be a Davidoff lounge, and there are restrictions to get in on the brick and mortar level and all of that. And, you know, it's got to be in a separate humidor. Humidor is usually white. It's a, it, it, it's a whole, like, shrine. Not shrine. Uh, yeah, shrine. I'll use the word shrine. When you walk in, it's separate from everyone else's stuff. That's why I came up with the conclusion that's in my head of the own planet. So that's where that's coming from. Uh, taste speaks for itself. Go out and celebrate today and get yourself one. I might. This is going to be a quick show, so I might have time to do that. Uh, Oliva, Series V. Uh, Oliva hangs on, right? Like, you know, uh, 
it, it's a fascinating brand to me. And what I mean by this is, you know, we the the people I associate myself with, either the business owner level or the consumers in the various cigar shop, I, I have reason to believe that if you're listening to the Stogie Geek show or if you are, are a subscriber to a podcast network that it has a subject of cigars, you're going to be chasing something new. Right, like you, you, you're not gonna, you're not just gonna sit around, listen to Stogie Geeks or any other podcast and just smoke out of Fuentes. Like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'd be hard pressed to, um, say that you would sit through all of this content or people that we interview, uh, week after week or or, or year after year, uh, to, um, you know, uh, not want to try something new. And and the point is like Oliver, like they just. They're, they're just a staple, and I wonder when that is going to break. Um, I know that usually different things that we do annually here on the Story Geek Show, I do the top five of, of companies to watch. I do top five of companies I'm excited about. I review this list. Um, we do tasting seminars from time to time and 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 all of that. Um, now we just don't have the bandwidth to have another three-and-a-half-hour episode of Three tequilas in <laughs> uh, pizza, but that was a great episode. Um, if you're, you know, can a lot of fast forwarding in that one if you want to get the content. <laughs> uh, and I think that was last time Paul was on the show. Oh no, it wasn't. It was actually just after Black Hat, so it's almost been a year uh, now, now because we he told you the Casa Fuente story and the Davidoff Lounge story that we're not going to go to the next. Nice episode two eighty three on that one was it? Was the was the tequila? August 6th, wow, it's been that long. August 6th, 2018 um, was the, if you want an episode. Wow, I'm thinking about that because I remember I, it was like Paul was like, I love you. I, this is on air. This is, I love you. I love you. The tequila is good. Johnny, we need to order a pizza. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, that was a good time. That was a really, really good time. Hmm. So anyway, uh, the Oliva Series V, I, maybe that it's not in their business model. I talked to the sales rep for Oliva locally here in the Northeast, and um, I gave my business card twice, and I'm still waiting for the bus tour information without the bus tour. So uh, that already happened. So uh, when I asked him this, like you know, like because I, I, you know, I, I run into reps. If you were in brick and mortar, you would run into reps too. So it's not a story geek thing. I ask these questions, like you know, you guys haven't really, like, are you guys ever going to look, or you, or what's the business model like? And um, you know, you would think I like had snakes crawling out of my head or or whatever when I ask just a simple question, you know, um, just because again. I would think if you're listening to a podcast or, or this podcast, you kind of want to know what's something new. But anyway, uh, 9.2% are asking for that Series V. So uh, you want to run a successful brick and mortar, put it in there. Uh, my father, 8%, solid 8. There you go. And then Monte Cristo. So again, take away from this, right? Take away from this. I remember, and I have no experience in this today, but I remember... When we were trying to do stuff with Arturo Fluente, it was crazy when we had the shop. And when I mean crazy, it was just like, you know, there were no sales reps. There were not podcasts. There were blogs. We were on 56K modem. The industry was much, much different than what it is now. But my takeaway is simple. Other than Rocky Patel... And I'm still like going like a solid 15 years here, right? So where are we? 2020. So say from 2005, right? So from 2005 on, this list is like the list, right? They may shift in percentages of who asked for what, but in regards to top 10, you know, you got Rocky Patel and the league is, I know they've been around for a while, so I don't need the, the email saying, you know, uh, league has been around since 2004 or five. Or I got it. Get it. We interviewed Steve Sock a couple of weeks ago. I understand that business wise. I'm looking at this list and saying that if you're looking 
to have a um, brick and mortar presence. This is a solid representation of what your clients, regardless of how you market, of what your clients are going to ask for. And the newer ones are really right there for me. I mean, I know that a lot of companies have come up with newer stuff since then, especially Monte Cristo. They produced uh, the Monte and one more off the top of my head. I don't have it. But again, um, you know, producing stuff that consumers want and... Uh, you know, oh, 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 where you go with that, right? So that that's what you need. So if you want the link to this, you can go to Scott Fishinato, click, click on news and get it. Um, I suggest you subscribe to the newsletter. It, it makes it easier for you uh, there. And if you haven't had any of these and, and uh, you know, wanted to go out uh, and go for it, I'm going to I'm gonna suggest a David off or an Opus X. <laughs> but you can't be shocked at that. Just so you know. Okay. Uh, switching gears here. Uh, any questions, comments, Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. Fire it off. Be happy to hear from you. Uh, there you go. There was also uh, same 141 cigar shops. This is interesting. 2020 retailer survey of how COVID has impacted America's cigar retailers. Um, survey of 141 shops uh, across the United States. Reveal how it has changed since the coronavirus. This is an interesting article. I'm not going to go through it in depth as much as I started the show with the other stuff because I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm a little COVIDed out. But it does make some 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 interesting points that might reflect either in your own world or might reflect in your own business so that you can do evaluation to understand as to where you are. Um, if you're interested in cybersecurity stuff, we have a show, Business Security Weekly, and last week's episode we talked a lot about that, leaving out the cybersecurity stuff towards the end and just talk to it from an executive level management, like where business is with COVID and what business owners are facing. Not only employees, but, you know, the business owners, right? The business owners, where they're going, what to expect. An answer everyone wants is how long. The answer everyone gets is we don't know. Uh, an answer everyone wants is how dangerous. The answer everyone gets is depends on your immune system, right? Take precautions and be safe out there. Anyway. Uh, here's a sales report. Shops reporting a decline in sales. Shops reporting, these are the um, categories. Shops reporting an increase in sales. Shops reporting re re reporting flat sales. And shops reporting closure during during the pandemic. So... Out of these 141 shops here, shops that have had a decrease in sales is 43.7%. Positive note. Shops that had an increase in sales is 41.4%. And my experience, and I, I don't try to speak for other than my experience, a lot of the shops that I deal with, the dealing with increases, had this conversation yesterday, right, with a shop owner, just saying, like, how are things, you know, because now we're in, each state is in their phase, right, phase three or two or staying or, you know, hovering, you know, and I'm like, how how are, th how are you navigating? It's like, oh, I'll tell you, we're, we're, we're doing okay, like, we're, we're doing okay. You know, morale is beat up a little bit. You know, you might be half-staffed. There might not be many people coming in and hanging out there. But the sales are actually doing good. Now, I know here in the Northeast, that's a big, big positive, right? But you also got to remember, like, we're weather-dependent we're weather, weather dependent as well. So right now, okay, it's July and August. People can grab their six, seven sticks Numbers go up in there. Might not be a lot of people in the shop. Might, might not need that many employees. But the numbers go up because we have the luxury to go by fire pit, hang out, beach, whatever, whatever, and then hang outside. But for those of you scoring at home here in the Northeast or wherever your territory, if you have a true four-season territory like we have, right, 
Um, you're going to get a couple good days in October. And you're going to get a couple great days in November. Right? But after that. You're flat. You might get two in November, three in October, and then it gets it gets it gets chilly. I mean, you know. And again, it depends on that actual consumer. So, uh, interesting. This survey comes out yearly at this time, but I wonder if they would do a survey in the winter of the same 141 shops because they're all geographically spread across the United States to get, you know, it's not like in Florida where, you know, it's smoking weather all year round. I mean, you know, or South Carolina or South, you know, low as it gets is like, you know, 34 degrees. I mean, you know, you can't deal with 34 degrees, but next to a fire pit you could because there's only like a week of 34 degrees, you know? So, again, uh, wondering if they did a six month and six month if if the increase in sales would go there, but again, it's very positive. Forty one point four percent have have noticed an increase. I know that um, just like the podcast revolution of COVID has created a bunch of people creating their own podcasts and doing their own things, although a version of podcast there, but a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of publicized Zoom meetings with scar vendors trying to go out there. I think the creativity is awesome. I think it's super cool that, you know, you have your virtual hearths and then do that there, um, you know, to, to go out there and, and do an event. Um, it works when you can do an event for a company and you're here and it's comfortable weather for you to sit outside. But if it's cold for some of the people who are zooming in or, or coming into whatever platform that they're using, it can get, um, you know, the, the, the participation rate would probably go down. Decrease in sales, 43.7. I don't know. I mean, you know, it, 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 again, volume-based. People are worrying about how long this is going to last. How long do I have to stay true in the storm? You know, I'm not going to spend that much money on cigars. Let me just get what I need for the week. That might be a factor, um, you know, depending on what they got going on personally. There you go. Shops reporting flat sales, only 14%. I mean, I thought that'd be kind of a little higher. My my take outside of the cigar industry is businesses either kind of flat or down, right? Um, you know, it, 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 unless you're kind of like COVID had pushed whatever business agenda you have forward from a technological perspective or now we are officially virtual, you know, if you were brick and mortar and you didn't have a website, you got one when it was cash and carry uh, for curbside pickup, right? So you escalated that there. And then shops reporting a closure during the pandemics, the ones that just closed like when we were on lockdown, uh, if you recall. Uh, in March and April, I was at a brick and mortar cigar shop that was closed but filming Stogie Geeks and zooming in. Um, and Johnny, who was the only Security Weekly uh, employee reporting, you know, because we were all social distancing in there. So 64% of those closed down. I'm not shocked at that number. A lot of businesses across the way have uh, closed down as well. So uh, those are the numbers. Um, Takeaway from that is, unfortunately, you, you just got to hang in there. Um, you got to try to innovate or die from a business perspective, uh, regardless of cigar industry, you got to get out there. You got to, you got, you got to do that. And, and, you know, like I said, sometimes, um, these things happen and sometimes they're handled properly or improperly, but that's just not a political show. So we will, uh, keep focus there. Um, a couple more things I want to talk about, uh, here is... Oh, boy. Oh, the links are wrong. No way. Uh-oh. No, links are right. That's weird. Okay. Anyway, my computer's reading the wrong links, but it's the right link that I clicked. Okay. It's one of those days. Um, sticks of the week. I have had the opportunity to try some some interesting sticks uh, over, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about... Uh, the EP Carrillo uh, Short Run 2016, the Tatuaje Mexican Experiment, uh, and the Room 101 Death Bucket uh, there. And, oh, side note, I'm super excited. I finally got my hands on some Pier 28 cigars from our interview 
way back with Tim uh, as well. So, you know, as scatterbrained as I am, I'm catching up with my to-do list uh, as as COVID is is hitting. I, I EP Carrillo short run series. I have always talked about this throughout my tenure here. I was a super fan of the 2013s. Um, I was a, 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 a fan of the 2015s. Um, had the 2016. This is the EP Creole short run. So, um, you know, this here came out in a, a different size than from the EP Creole short, uh, short, short run series. So, uh, obviously, the year speaks for itself every year. There's a there's a, a a new release of the short run series uh, here. Uh, the 2016 uh, has a rapper. It's Ecuadorian Habano binder and filler on Nicaraguan. The size is a six by 52. It's in that Toro size. Um, MSRP pre tax and all of that stuff. Depending as to where you live, you're about 12 bucks a stick. Comes in boxes of 10. Um, the release date was April 20th of 2016. Um, let me tell you something. Like, I, if I could put them in order, 13, 16, 15 <laughs> for me, right? The 13s were awesome. I mean, you're not, I'm not going to send you on a wild goose chase. If you happen to find some of those sites that kind of hold onto sticks and then trade them in there, then you can, you know, go for it and find them. Uh, buy a five pack of the 13s. Uh, if you find a box, let me know. Joe H is storygeeks.com. I'll split it with you. I'll Vimo or PayPal or, or you know, whatever you want to do uh, for that because the, 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 those are were super enjoyable. But back to the EP Carrillo short run 2016. Um, when it starts off, you're going to get some coffee and you're going to get a sweetness, right? Really, really interesting sweetness. Um, you're like kind of like, eh, you know, it, it's good. But you get that old school tobacco flavor that I really, really like. And then from the, from the sweetness kind of dissipates. And when you're about halfway done, you get some nice pepper blast. Not harsh pepper. Uh, I'm going to say black pepper. Yeah, I'm going to say black. Because white pepper to me kind of makes that scratchiness for me. So um, black pepper... Really strength kicks in, becomes a little bit complex. I did a V cut with one. I did a bullet cut with the other. Obviously, to no shock, I like the bullet cut better. Um, again, you get some earth, some spice, coffee throughout the whole um, stick. But for me, it goes from sweet to actually peppery there. Um, but not like super harsh, hardcore Nicaraguan spice if i could create a visual for you hope i did that if i didn't i'm sorry um story geeks rating definitely box worthy for you to uh consider getting this stick uh it's super good super tasty um i thoroughly enjoyed it i believe i have like two left and that's that's the way that goes uh you can pick those up local brick and mortar if, if they're hardcore into ep carrillo or you can pick them up um if you throw it into the machine and go for it, uh, you won't be disappointed uh, there. If you've had other years, um, let me know your thoughts. Maybe we'll uh, – uh, I have notes on the uh, 13, 15, 16. Um, if you have some other ones, maybe we can do a trade and fill in the gaps of the years and have you come on, Story Geeks, if you're interested. Uh, Joe H is StoryGeeks.com. Uh, only making that readily available because Paul is a real big fan of E.P. Carrillo uh, and and Ernesto and what he does. So I think we can accommodate that. And maybe we'll get him on the show and talk about it. So uh, next stick is the – oh, I was pumped at this stick. The Room 101 Death Bucket, right? Uh, bought this stick sight unseen. Just because of the history and, you know, I retire, I don't retire, I come back into the scene, all of that stuff. Um, when it comes to uh, Matt, Matt Booth of Room 101, 
Now, this is a uh, 6x52 Toro. It has an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a Dominican binder, and a Nicaraguan filler. Originally, there were 7,500 cigars made, um, and these were uh, sent to some stores back in 2018. And they were super enjoyed, and now they created another 10,000. Funny how that works. Um, and, you know, pricing, you're around your $10 stick. So, you know, it sounds ultra limited, but it, 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 it's limited to 17,500 cigars because they did the original 7,500 and then uh, 10,000 cigars uh, there. This came out in August 2018. Um, Again, 6x52, Nicaragua Fila, Dominican Republic Bina, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Uh, completely, completely threw me off from a um, what's expected from a Room 101 cigar. I'm a fan of Room 101, spoke about them here on the show. Uh, absolutely uh, there. But it's like when I had it, it it's like... The retro hail seems to be it. It's it's the whole stick is a bit milder than the profile that I would expect, but super super tasty and such a unique flavor. I get a little bit of white pepper, but it's not overwhelming. Um, it was ranked kind of a medium full cigar. I I'd go true medium. Uh, with that ranking there, um, you know, you get a little bit of pepper, you get a little bit of white pepper. It's zesty, if that makes sense. We've explained that before. Uh, I think it was in the last episode, so I don't have to beat that down. Um, and y y you get some earthiness, and, and it's like a creamy, earthy flavor bomb. Um, you, you won't be disappointed, uh, there. Uh, the retro hail. Is tasty, but I didn't really notice too much, too too much difference uh, there. I, I'm not gonna say box worthy, but definitely if you find a box, definitely box split with a friend. But I do a box split on the Room 101. Um, the uh, where am I? The Room 101 deck, Room 101 death bucket. I always want to call it like a thousand death bucket. I don't know where I get that from, but anyway. Uh, super cool ta uh, super cool taste, very tasty, lingers on your palate, smoke content's a little thin, but, um, it, it won't disappoint you, that's for sure, in my opinion, uh, there. Another stick I want to talk about, this was gifted to me, we alluded to this last episode, um, was the Tatuaje Mexican Experiment, uh, Bellicoso, this is... A Mexican San Andreas wrapper, binder and filler Nicaraguan. The size I had was a 5x52. Awesome stick. Um, I, well, right? It's Tatuaje, right? So we know that I'm going to most likely uh, enjoy it uh, there. Uh, it's available in four different sizes. You have a Robusto, which is a 5x54. You have a Toro which is a five and three fourths by 50. You have a Churchill, which is six and a half by 48. And you have the Bellicoso, which is five by 52. I had the Bellicoso five by 52 and I had the Robusto um, five, five by 54. Um, not that we're shocked. The Robusto is where it's at <laughs> for me. Um, again, you're in that $10 price range, so it's not going to uh, kill you. Awesome stick. Pretty... For you to find this in in your local brick and mortar, they got to be pretty into in into the Tatuaje line uh, there. But I'm I'm a super fan, absolutely positively uh, super fan of this stick. You get a, a a dark brown wrapper, and the stick looks like like it's heavier than what it's actually going to smoke. I got a mix of black pepper, a uh, little bit of sweetness coming in there when I started, and then it kind of faded out, and then it just got into just classic Tatuaje, Nicaraguan. If you bullet cut it, you're going to get that leather component. Um, you know, thick, full smoke on the palate. Um, 
I don't think it's it, I think it's a medium I'd go medium barely full uh there uh and again I'm all over this stick um box worthy for sure uh I would probably pick up a box of robustos and knock around with those for a little bit uh there um on top of that another tatuaje I just can't get off of and I'm actually bummed that we don't have um a lot of those left in the humidor is the uh seventh uh kappa special um awesome stick there i just i you know i get a chance in there there's sometimes and i don't know about you but when it comes to me i'm like uh yeah i really want to want to get on you know, like oh if i have it and i'm like oh my god i forgot how good this stick was right and then um as you know i can drive to studio and when I drive to studio, uh, I'm thinking about what I'm going to have to smoke. And I'm like, I'm going to get one of those Kappa Specials. Or I'm going to get that Mexican experiment. You know, totally like it uh, there. Uh, next time we meet, I'm probably going to talk about the San Latano Oval Connecticut. Interesting interesting stick um, there. It's, to me, it's part of that complex Connecticut movement that I keep dubbing uh, there. But, um, yeah. So, that's where we're at, and uh, episode 336 is a wrap. I am going to go finish this stick, get a Davidoff, keep my social distancing, finish my beer, and move on. And uh, I want to say happy anniversary to Drew uh, again for his, his celebration. We will uh, celebrate when um, Story Geeks comes on. And for you Story Geeks, if you want to let me know what you have been smoking, if you if I... Don't mention anything that you think I should try and point me in the right direction. By all means, email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. File all of your complaints to drew at stogiegeeks.com. Remember, we keep the uh, story going and conversations going all week long. Check us out on facebook.com forward slash stogiegeeks. You can email us. There you go. And get out there and stay safe and be safe. Special thanks to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, and Placencia Cigars. Story Geeks, we will see you not next week, but the week after. Be safe. Peace. <laughs>